So, Mikey, what are we doing this week? What are we doing? Uh, I think we're in Bellevue, right? We're in Bellevue. Bellevue, Bellevue. Uh, Power Shell Summit. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But we're forgetting something. Oh, yeah. Wired for hybrid. What's new in virtual networking? Yeah, I guess we have to find some spots and uh, record the episode. Maybe we should go over there. All right, let's go. Go. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another edition of Wired for Hybrid. This week, we're doing a different kind of networking. Uh, instead of being each in our uh, respective closet slash basements, as we normally are, we are in person at the PowerShell and Automation Summit in Bellevue, Washington. It's kind of cool to be back with people. It is. It's, it's kind of weird in one sense, but it is pretty awesome to be back at a conference you know having those hallway sessions which are the best sessions yep and you know just being able to reconnect with communities people. yeah with communities and know that there are still some awesome communities out there people doing yep. some great work and just a great great week so far and we've got one more day left one tomorrow. more day um, You've got a session tomorrow, right? I have a session on AI-generated code in the enterprise. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. You doing some of the I chat may... GPT stuff? No, not chat stuff? GPT. I might be doing some co-pilot stuff. It's still finishing it... the talk tonight? No, it's done oh, for wow. once. That's, that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Normally, it's like the hour before, but no, it's actually done. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so if you are part of a community, if you are a coder, a network administrator, an IT pro, whatever label you put on yourself uh, and you're part of a community, get involved. People are great. Let's talk. We need, your, we need you to talk to us. Anyway. <laughs> uh, You've been in your basement too long. I've been in my basement too long. I've been in my basement too long. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So Mike, what's uh, the first item you have this week? The first item we have this week is pretty exciting one. Yep. Um, I am a little biased. A little? A little biased. Just a little? Because I am the content developer, aka writer, for Azure Virtual Network Manager. And yes. I think we mentioned this from time to time, but a but, uh, few weeks back, Azure Virtual Network Manager, or AVNM, as we like to yes. call it. Because we love our acronyms. Yep went generally available. So yep. it is now available for customers to use to do hub spoke configurations. Okay. So what AVNM does for you is it allows you to centrally manage your virtual networks. With, and the interconnectivity of them. And the interconnectivity of them through a couple of different options we have. Yep. The first, which is GA, for Hubspoke is connectivity configuration. Yep. What that allows you to do is it allows you to, to group, create a policy. Mm -hmm. In general, you create a policy. Yep. It allows you to define, I want these virtual networks to be in this spoke. I want these virtual networks to be in the hub. Yep. And then it goes. So we can do that manually or we can actually use Azure policy to, to define that. that dynamically. So what's great about that is that many organizations grow. You add virtual networks yes. in, just like on-prem, when you add new stuff in, if you're not keeping track of it, you might miss it. So what'll happen is that, let's say you create a Azure policy that defines group membership yep. based on a specific part of the name of the virtual network. Okay. Say it's prod. Then a new virtual network that comes on that's prod will become part of that and you don't have to do anything. So you don't end up with like Horfin networks somewhere. So you could have in your hub 
uh, for example, your, your Azure monitor resources, your, your backup vaults, or like all of the stuff to manage the rest of your network could be in the hub. And then as you're deploying new virtual networks with uh, workloads, they automatically connect because of the policy. Yep, absolutely. Outstanding. So it's, so it's, so it's super cool. Um, the other part of it is, so you can do mesh configuration yep. as well. And that is going to be coming generally available in the future. A little bit. Uh, we also have security admin rules. So with security admin rules, what these allow you to do is we're all familiar with NSGs, or we should, network security groups, should the, be. The bane of my existence in some cases. Yep. The problem with NSGs is you have to define them at all of the different levels. So what we can do with security admin rules is we can create levels and we can create memberships for the yep. virtual networks to apply to specific groupings. So let's say our organization wants to block SSH and RDP for all virtual networks. Okay. We can create a blanket rule at the top of our organization so people can't errantly or on. by choice turn those on. What we can also do is we have some flexibility in when we decide, do we completely ban the use of that or we can leave it open to specific groups of virtual networks okay. to be able to use NSGs then. If there's a, if there's a business need yep, for it. Absolutely. So then, and you know, you can think of it both ways. You could have a, perhaps something you want open to yep. everything. So it's going to work just like it's going to, you can either. It's like a firewall work. Yep. You can block or allow, you know, those sorts of things. So super, super cool. That's coming along. Along with that, which is super exciting, next week we're going to be talking with Andrea yes. Michael, who yes. is, I work with Andrea on a day-to-day -day basis. She's, she's fantastic. The, yeah, she's amazing. She's the product manager, one of the product managers, along with Jay Lee, for Azure Virtual Network Manager. Yep. Her and I and Pierre are going to sit down. We're going to deep dive into Azure Virtual Network Manager. And because it's yes. such a cool project product and there's a ton of stuff, we're going to cover next week. We're going to cover Virtual Network Manager and Hub Spoke. Then we're going to come back once security admin rules and mesh and then any of the new features that we are get. Lit up, yep. We're going to do another deep dive on that. So okay, I so think. Subscribe, the bell, hit that bell. Uh, you don't want to miss that. So if you subscribe and hit that bell, you'll be notified when we put that online. Absolutely. Anyway. And make sure to let us know if, you know, if that's the type of content that you're looking for. Yes. We're always looking for great ideas of who, of people to reach out to within the networking yep. group to come and provide you that information you need in order to... Well, that IPv6 one we did with John Flores generated a ton of conversations online for me. Yeah, that was, a, that was an awesome session. That yeah. was great having John on. Yeah. We, should, we should definitely try to see if we can get him on again. We'll do more, we'll do more. But if you have something specific you want to see, let us know, comment below. Anyway, what's your second point? So my second point, we have we seem to be always talking about web application firewall. Every month. WAF. Every, Every month. month. Because it's an important product, right? Yep. And we got a deep dive scheduled in the upcoming future. So definitely have a deep dive on that. So what we have is we have scale improvements okay. and metrics enhancements with that. So what that means is that WAF is going to have b greater scale. So. To kind of give you, you know, just a refresh, web application firewall, it provides that centralized protection for your applications. Yes. So gives you those firewall capabilities, you know, malicious attacks, SQL injections, all those sorts of things. Yeah, but it, it's, a, it's an application firewall, it's a web application firewall. So it's not your typical like layer seven, yeah. like, Absolutely. So it's just deep packet inspection firewall, yeah. but it is to protect your application and your workloads from established patterns. Yeah. SQL injections, cross-site scripting, yeah. you know, those sorts of things directly targeted at applications. So what it does 
as far as the, the, the scaling is it's going to allow you to have a greater number of ports, front okay. end ports, a greater number of HTTP load balancing rules, back end HTTP settings, more SSL certificates, and also redirect configurations. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's good. So, and we have more <laughs> metrics. <laughs> metrics are good. Metrics are good. So we're going to, you're going to have- Visibility into what the hell's going on. Absolutely. So, you know, just along the same lines of having improved scale, we need to be able to know what's going on. Yeah, so, report on it, yep. trigger events on it based on, the, yep. on that. So you're going to be able to see how many total requests is WAF doing, rule matches, yep. and uh, custom rule matches, and then bot protection rule matches. So the big thing to remember with this is that this is available with all application gateway V2 WAF SKUs. Okay. That's a mouthful there. Yes. Um, that are running core rule set 3.2. Which, which we talked about two months ago. Yep, absolutely. So you can definitely check that out. So that's that new generation. Yep. Or it's the, update, the, the updated rule set. Yep. The updated rule set is that new generation WAF engine that... Uh, yeah, I think we talked about that in January. Yep. So that's all super good stuff. And we definitely have docs for you on both of those you can check out. Absolutely. But I think you got something cool to talk, tell us about. Yes. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. We have uh, new enhanced connection troubleshooting fake, uh, capabilities as part of uh, Azure Net, uh, Traffic Manager. So Azure Traffic Manager allows you to basically decide where the traffic goes. If you're, can, if you're in Canada, you go there. If you're in the US, you go there. If you're in China, you go there. If you're wherever. Anyway, it's basically like traffic shaping uh, for, that you can control uh, uh, for, your, for Azure networking. So it's like the guy that I saw on the street on campus because all the roads are under construction. The one that was directing yeah, traffic? Was, yeah. Not quite, but okay. like, yeah, close enough. So he's not the one that's doing traffic manager? No, no, he's okay. not the one. Cool. Uh, but th so there's improvements into it. So traffic manager has always been around uh, and uh, kind of coupled with it is the uh, Azure Network Watcher. Azure Network Watcher is the way that you can monitor the health of your virtual networks uh, within your environment. But now there's like enhanced troubleshooting uh, capabilities. Some were existing and have been uh, kind of like tweaked and, and uh, a little better now. Some are brand new. So we've got like IP flow uh, verify. So you can like verify the flow of tra uh, across your virtual network, across your gateways, and kind of like map that out. Uh, you can check what the next ops are going to be. There's going to be some port scanners, checking NSG issues. Because if you've got lots of, in a, in a mesh or in a hub and spoke kind of network, and you've got NSGs at the, at the subnets, and you've got NSGs at the, at the device, and at the server, at the NIC, you're trying to connect from one server to another, and you realize that it can, it's not connecting, like which NSG is actually bro breaking yeah. it. So there are tools now to do this, uh, to check for user-defined rules, uh, to check for blocked uh, de or detecting uh, blocked ports, and one of the cool things that is new is that now it'll give you actionable insights uh, in, in the form of like a step-to-step -step uh, guide. So if there's a problem, there's a step-by-step -step guide that will walk you through how you troubleshoot and fix your environment. Oh, that's awesome. So that's really, really cool, especially for uh, network administrators that are not dealing with this type of work like every day. Yeah. If you're if you're in a mom and pop shop, if you're in like a small business and you're wearing like six different hats, you're the developer, you're the, the manager, you're the IT pro, the network guy, and the, the backup guy, well, you're not spending all your time on there. So it will give you uh, that, that insight to kind of guide you through the troubleshooting methodologies. Very cool. That's a, definitely some uh, good stuff there. Yep. Uh, Oh, we talked about uh, firewall basics. Did we talk no, about firewall basics? No, not. that was you. I, we, we skipped. Not. We skipped one. We did not. So, <laughs> finally, Azure Firewall Basic is generally. Oh, available. I thought you were going to say the Rock has come back totally to Seattle. <laughs> finally, the Rock has come back 
to Seattle. We're, we're going we're gonna to get the DMCA strikes for that. We are, well, so we can cut that out. No, it's okay. All right. <laughs> so Azure Firewall Basic has gone generally available. And we, yeah. we talked a couple months ago when it was private preview. Yes, we had an episode where there was no GAs that month, and we reviewed a bunch of previews, yep. and we were excited about that one. So definitely go back, check that out, get some information about that. But Azure Firewall Basic is going to bring that cloud-native firewall functionality to small to medium-sized businesses. So it's going to give you almost everything that the Everything other, you need at that size. Yep. Everything you need when you're a small organization to protect your organization is in the box at a yes. price point that's cost-effective for yes. smaller organizations. This is something we've been hearing from customers forever. Yes. I remember... I can I remember. Didn't, people didn't want the bells and whistles. They just wanted to have a basic firewall, layer seven, packet inspection to protect their environment. Absolutely. And, you know, this is also something, let's say you're a, a larger organization mm -hmm. and you haven't moved into using Azure Firewall. This is a good step in to see, okay, yep. do you need everything that's in firewall standard? You could use this and then maybe down the road, you do need those features you can always move up. Yeah. But so, the, the, you got to be careful, though, because there's also, because it's a basic, there's also uh, not a restriction on throughput. Like, it's it's yeah. not quite as fast as yep. your standard yep. or advanced queues. So, you know, for those larger organizations, you're probably going to run yep. into some things. That is a great point. Yep. Make sure people understand the, the throughputs. And we definitely have the documentation for that. Yes. You can you can see how to, how to deploy it using... Uh, Docs at learn.microsoft.com. We Isn't have it learn.microsoft.com now? Learn.microsoft.com. Yeah, you said docs. Oh. We've had a rebranding. Anyway, if you the, go to docs at microsoft.com, look, look, it'll look, take at you. The, look at the URL here. It's going to be right here. It's going to be right here. You're probably going to put it right <laughs> here. Um, so, yes, it is learn.microsoft.com. So much more fun in person doing this. It, it totally is. I think what's going to happen is that. Everybody's going to be like, you two need to get in the room. To do I just need shows. to get out of my basement. That's yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, my second item is reserved namespace for subdomains. So it's again uh, kind of related to the traffic manager. My first point. Now uh, with Af uh, traffic manager, what you can do is there's new functionality on how you can reserve labels for your subdomains. So when you're using Traffic Manager, you, you end up with like a label.trafficmanager.net. This is like worldwide and across tenants. So if you have like trademarks, if you have company names, if they have workloads, if you reserve them now, they can't be used by anybody else. By, and by having a nomenclature that is controlled and reserved that you control, uh, it will help you in terms of uh, increased uh, application av availability uh, and application performance because it doesn't have to like to jump all over the place. So, uh, Traffic Manager will uh, streamline that. Uh, it'll help you in like combining hybrid apps. So if you've got like the front end in the cloud, the back end on prem, it controls all that traffic. Nice. Uh, and also distribute the traffic where you want it. So if you're in Europe, you go to one of our European data centers. If you're in North America, you go to uh, uh, um, East US, for example, or West US currently, or in Canada, whatever it is. Like or you, central. You, or central, you're yeah. central, that's yeah. right. Uh, it helps you define and distribute the traffic uh, the way you want it to be done so that you have an impact into how your stakeholders are being served with the application. Very cool. And speaking of central, this isn't really news, but I just wanted to throw this in. They are building a data center in my state. I heard. I heard. Very exciting. I heard. I still well, won't get a tour of it. No. As I was going to say one of these days, maybe they'll invite us for a tour. But Yeah. It'd be great if we could go see the one in Redmond again. And record an episode in a data center. That, we would be escorted out really quickly. And CELA would be all over us. Oh, yeah. Because... Yes. We're not allowed to be here. We just kind of 
using the big room at the conference center while everybody else is in sessions. Yep. Uh, well, speaking of that, uh, I think we have sessions to get to. We do. We and do. I think I saw somebody open that door over there, so. Yeah, I think John was waving. He's like, cut, cut out. Anyway, uh, as mentioned several times, hit the bell, like and subscribe. Tell us in the comments if there are technologies you want us to deep dive on, because we have a list, but if most of you are leaning towards a certain product, maybe it goes up the priority list. We want to engage with you. We want to answer your questions. Uh, and if you just want to listen to us uh, and not have to see this, um, we are available on Spotify, Spotify iTunes, Tunes. and... Uh, uh, I Heart Radio. And Amazon. And Amazon. Amazon Music, yeah. That's right. So subscribe, like, let us know what you think, and we will see you next month. Cheers.